Okay guys, in this video, I'm gonna break down a six marker level of response question involving NMR spec, okay? This is from an AQA, A-level chemistry past paper. If you want to check out the paper yourself, it was from paper two, June 2020, and this was question seven. Let's jump straight into this then. So I'm just gonna read through the question. A compound is usually mixed with this guy right here, silicon CH34. Hopefully you know what the name of this is and either CCL4 or CDCL3 before recording the compound's proton NMR spectrum. State, all right, this is our command word here, state why silicon CH34, CCL, and CDCL3 are used in proton NMR. Explain, this is our second command word, how their properties make them suitable for use in proton NMR. So what I'm gonna do here is, in all of these level of response questions, all right, you're gonna to wanna to mirror your response to the sequence of the question. So I'm gonna say this is part one, this is part two. So firstly, we're gonna state all of this good stuff here, and then we're going to explain it and expand upon it. So if we look at this silicon CH34, the actual name of this is tetramethylsilane, okay? Shortened down to TMS. Hopefully you're aware of that. Okay, so level of response questions, guys. You can use bullet points for this, perfectly fine. It's not an essay question. Don't get those two confused. So I'll put a brief sentence here. Tetramethylsilane, showing off a bit here, okay? Showing off the name, getting those marks for chemistry terminology. And then I've just given the molecular formula here. Is used as a standard. This is the keyword here, standard, okay? That's what it's used for. Alternatively, you can use words such as calibration or reference point or something along those lines. Those would also be accepted, okay? And this produces a single peak at zero parts per million, okay? Obviously, the shortened word for this, like I said, is TMS. So you could chuck that in there as well in the sentence if you want. Okay, next bullet point, CCL4 and CDCL3, these are both used as solvents, okay? So they're used to dissolve our sample in. So I'm gonna round this off with a final bullet point on the first point here where we're stating why they're used, okay? The reason that they're used is that both tetramethyl silane, so our silicon CH34, as well as our solvents, our CCL4 and CDCL3, these are inert, okay? So they're not going to, they're essentially unreactive. So they will not react with the sample, okay? If they react with the sample, we're gonna get all sorts of shenanigans going on and it's gonna interfere with our spectra and that's the last thing that we want when we're doing these incredibly analytical techniques, okay? So that's the first point out of the way. Point one, give that a juicy tick, where's my green? Give that a nice tick. Okay, we've got that out, out of the way. Next up is explaining. So we have to expand upon this and explain how their properties specifically, let me actually highlight that point, properties. How do their properties make them useful? Okay, so when answering this point, I'm just gonna split our solvent and our standard up and then break those down separately. So I've written a really brief sentence here regarding our solvent. So CCL4 is a non-polar solvent. So really important to know that, okay? And this is ideal for performing proton NMR of non-polar molecules or dissolving non-polar molecules, okay? And this is because the dipoles exhibit symmetry and will cancel each other out. All right, so if you don't understand this, let me briefly explain it. If you do, just feel free to skip ahead. All right, so I've drawn our CCL4 molecule here. This is the non-polar molecule, and you, know, you might not know why, but this is why, okay? So we have our dipoles existing here due to the electronegativity of the chlorine here. So I'm gonna label that as relatively negative, and we have our relatively positive carbon in the center. So this is our dipole that exists, okay? But because we have symmetry here, we have four chlorines, okay? So I'm gonna label all of these as delta negative. Each of these chlorines, although they're pulling the electrons towards themselves due to their, their electronegativity, they're all going to do it by an equal amount, okay? So essentially what happens here is they're going to cancel out the dipoles. Think of something like tug of war, okay? You've got four people pulling on a rope, eek, but they're equally strong, okay? So they're gonna equally pull on the rope, no one's going anywhere, okay? The electrons are essentially staying right in the center, they're not going, getting pulled towards the uh, electronegative chlorines here. So that's basically why it's non-polar. All right, so I've added in another couple of bullet points there, okay? I'm speeding things up. I'm not showing you me writing everything out. To save you guys a bit of time. So CDCL3, this is our polar solvent, okay? And that's because if I rub one of these out quickly, one of these chlorines out, and replace it with a deuterium, put that in a nice green here, deuterium. And this, this is not going to have a dipole occurring, okay? So there's no longer symmetry, therefore it's polar now.
All right, just keep that in mind. And this is ideal for proton NMR of polar organic molecules. So they're going to be able to suitably dissolve in that solvent. Okay, next point about why they use. So their properties. So CdCl3 and CCl4 both contain no hydrogens, no protons, okay? So they will not interfere with the NMR spectra by producing peaks, all right? The last thing you want is proton containing solvents which are going to mess up your spectra completely and just confuse the hell out of you okay so that's sorted next up is tms all right and that's our uh, silicon ch34 okay this is our standard why is this used so what i'm going to do just draw my uh, standard out okay i don't know if that's going to get me any marks but it's always worth a try because the reason I'm doing this is because I can demonstrate that we have symmetry here, okay? And if we have symmetry, we're going to lead to equivalent hydrogen environments, okay? Okay, so I moved that up the page a bit because we might be running out of space here. And I put in a brief bullet point here. So our TMS, it has 12 equivalent hydrogen environments, okay? And this is due to the symmetry present. Therefore, it only produces a single peak. Hopefully, you're you're familiar with the theory of proton NMR, but all of these environments, even though they contain three hydrogens each, exactly the same, okay? Because if we have symmetry across this way, across this way, okay? Okay, next point about TMS is that it's volatile, okay? It's gonna be able to evaporate very easily, and it has a low boiling point due to the weak intermolecular forces, okay? Boiling point, melting point, always to do with the intermolecular forces, okay? And then I said, thus, it is easily removed once the spectra is completed, all right? So you chuck in your sample into this standard with the solvents and all that good stuff, and then once you've completed your spectra, apply a little bit of heat, boil off the TMS, and you're back to where you started. Okay, last point about TMS then, then we're pretty much done with this question really. TMS produces a single peak, and it's far to the right from the other peaks, okay? So on your proton NMR uh, spectra that you have, you will see a peak, a single peak at zero ppm chemical shift, and this will be our standard, our TMS. Therefore, it is easily identifiable and can be removed from the spectra if so desired. So often when you see this spectra, there actually won't be a peak at zero, and that's because they've gone through, the analytical chemists have gone through, and they've removed that peak, okay? Okay, so here's the mark scheme. If you guys want to pause the video, check it out for yourself, see what I missed out, see what I did differently. I think I pretty much did exactly the same thing, because honestly, within this portion of the NMR topic, there's honestly not much more you need to know about these solvents and standards, okay? This is pretty much every single point you need to know. There's not much more to add. I added in diagrams regarding the actual standard itself, as well as the polarity of the solvents explained based on dipole orientation. Um, I don't even know if that's required, but I put it in there to explain it to you guys. Um, but yeah, this is the end of the video. Hopefully you learned something, okay? If you did, Drop me a like, subscribe for future chemistry content, really helps the channel grow. Going to be branching out to biology and maths and physics and other good stuff soon. That's the plan. Best of luck with your exams, guys. Peace.